Hello guys, welcome back to Seth with Warnke. This is part four of the 3.2 notes. So the last thing that we need to cover is our influential or unusual points. We have three classifications of unusual points. We have high leverage points, outliers, and influential points. Now these are a new update to the AP course guide from uh, 2020 or for 2020. So if you look in our book, you might see something that's a little bit out of date in terms of the definition that they use for outliers and influential points. So real quickly, let's identify a couple important things. So a high leverage is a point in a regression that has much larger or much smaller X values. So that's the thing that you are on the lookout for, much larger, much smaller X values. For outliers, there are two things that it has to do. Number one, it has to not follow the pattern. So that means that it is unusual in that it's not like the rest of them. And then the other one is that it has a large residual. Those are the two key criteria to be classified an outlier. For an influential point, that has a couple different uh, conditions, but the main one is just if we remove it, does it make a big change, a substantial change? So if removed, we're looking for a substantial change. So it can meet both of these. It can be, for example, both an outlier and an influential point or a high leverage point and an influential point. Um, it is unlikely though that it would be both a high leverage and an outlier. And I'll show you that on the next page. But um, outliers and high leverage points often have big influences or outsized influence on regression. So if it's an outlier or high leverage point, it's probably going to be an influential point. So if I flip this over to the other side, you'll see that we have four different cases. So in each of these cases, we have a cluster of points and then we have our computer output. So if I'm looking at our equation here, I can see, okay, this equation looks pretty normal, nothing too crazy there, an R value of 0.41, an R squared of 0 0.17, and a S of 2.77, so standard error. Uh, standard deviation of our residuals of 2.77. So if we look at this one point right here, that's way away from all the rest of these dots. So all the rest of these have a much smaller x value, whereas this one has a much, much larger x value. Because of that, it substantially changes all of our values. So our r is substantially changed, the r squared is substantially changed, and the s. Actually, our equation is uh, pretty much the exact same, which is interesting. But because of that significant change on R and R squared, we're going to refer to that as an influential point. And then because of its distance away on the x-axis, we're going to refer to that as a high leverage point. So it has a much bigger x than the rest of them, much bigger than what we would expect. Case number three also has a much bigger X. The difference with this one is that instead of being up high, like in case two, this one's much lower. So it doesn't follow the trend of the data. Like this one kind of follows that trend, generally speaking, this one not quite as much. So if we look at this, this also had a substantial change on our R. Instead of being positive like it was for the previous one, we now have a negative. Again, that's associated with the slope. The slope is now negative for this line. Our R squared is, again, not too drastically changed, but that R is. And then our standard error is also changed a little bit. So because of that influence on R, because of that location on the x-axis, we're going to refer to that as a high leverage point and an influential point. High leverage because it's far away on the x-axis. It's either significantly larger in this case, or it could also be significantly smaller than what we would expect and influential because of that change that has on R. Last case, case number four. So this one, instead of being far away in the X direction, is far away in the Y direction. So it's a normal like X, like we might expect, but much farther away in the Y. Again, there's a fairly substantial change in R from what we had in case number one. There's a substantial change in R squared and there is a much more substantial change in S. So because of those variations, that's gonna make that an influential point. And this one, because it is so large of a residual, it's so much higher than all these other ones from the line, that is going to make it an outlier. To be considered an outlier in a scatter plot or in a 
regression situation, you need to have a distance on the residual, a distance away from the rest of the points, vertically speaking. So all three of those involve unusual points, things that would be classified as unusual. So when we're looking at uh, those scatter plots and we classify things as unusual points, those are the features that we might be able to call out. I would generally default to being as safe as possible and just calling it an unusual point and only going further if the problem indicates that you should. So if it's asking you, do you have any outliers or do you have any high leverage points, that's when you can uh, specify each of those. But generally speaking, I would just refer to it as an influential point or an unusual point. All right, that is it for today, guys. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.